right, this is Comcast, and I am Connor Sinclair. The date is uh, November 23rd, 3050, and today we have Laser Angel. Laser Angel once more. Kalis. This is Kalis. We have Visagio Rain. Hey! The Alex Wolf. Hello, pleased to be here again. Angry Iron Worker. How's it going, guys? Attack Wallaby. I left XCOM for this, so it better be good. <laughs> Dude bot. Bazinga. Iggy. Better late than never. Molasses Fats. Yes. Noblesse Oblige. Noblesse Oblige. <laughs> Alright, whatever. <laughs> no sass from you. Do you even armored core, bro? I do, I just... That's just the way I say it. Met Royce. Doesn't even lift. Valkyrie. Hey guys, uh, greetings from Austin, Texas, where the weather is as bad as PGI's programming. <laughs> and our uh, guest, Tolkien. Hey, Kong has a really nice recording studio. I know, right? We're all in the same place. This is live. And the first topic, Community Warfare Phase 1 Association. Oof. <laughs> Oh. That'll never happen. Uh, I, well, that happened, but what about the other parts? It's it's basically just a, a written revisit to what they did during the launch event. And what I they did um, a year earlier in the PC Gamer article. Yeah, it, it's literally just a reiteration. You You said this a year ago. And this was like in September 30th. So when is this actually going to start? This was a month ago. We're a little bit behind here. Hey, Laser? Well, like you said, I'd just like to point out that it's November 23rd, and this post is from September 30th, and we haven't heard anything else about it. All right, Angry Iron Worker. Uh, one thing they did give us is some hard numbers with uh, some very exorbitant, exuberant uh, uh, money for whoever, how many, however, 12 founding members for the, uh, for the, merc- the mercenary uh, groups. I'm just, I'm astounded that, well, this was written back in the, the ancient fucking past. Like, back when the Flintstones were around. That's how old this shit is. And we still haven't had a follow-up to it. And there's some shit about you needing 12 founding members, blah, 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 blah and you need 18.8 million C-bills each for a total of almost 233 million, just to get the Merc Corps started. Just to get the started. Alex? Well, at least now we know that the dedication part is supposed to be... Just spending 36 hours in game grinding Sibyls to set it up and not actual uh, subscription. The subscription, the premium account will only lessen the pain. Of course, the numbers are subject to change, but for the time being, this is the, the ballpark we're getting. Does it look good? Okay, Iggy. Yeah, the thing that kills me about what their presentation implied was that you know for the community warfare you're paying in at the merc corp so they can uh, you know buy this drop ship whatever this asset is supposed to be and then this drop ship's supposed to allow you supposedly to move around and engage in all these epic wonderful battle tech style fights all over the inner sphere um, in assistance to uh, house units thing that it just baffles me is have they ever come forward and said exactly what the drop ship itself is supposed to be asset wise what it's supposed to provide to you and have they ever 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 done any sort of follow up on exactly what players who want to be a house unit get out of this deal Mm-mm. right no they hadn't that was like the first nope. thing i had uh i'd watched first for question was... no answer and yeah, we don't know. All, the only thing we know is that something about dedicating yourself to a unit gets you more C bills, so it's a grind for more income. But other than that, we have no clue what the, the treasure or whatever it is you're supposed to get. No police. So, at the moment, it looks like it's just too little, too late for this community warfare stuff. I mean, it was supposed to come out. When was it? Last year at about this time. Yes. There cannot possibly even be 500 members total. 
to fill up an entire Merc core anymore. Are you entitled, Noblesse? Not even entitled, uh, I'm just sad. <laughs> you know, Community Warfare would have been too little too late if it came out yesterday. What we have now is like a sketch, a scribble on a margin, and it's nowhere near yet. It okay. is a sketch and a scribble on a margin, because fucking Brian wrote it on a cocktail napkin on his way to the fucking club. <laughs> Pretty much. What were they even uh, trying to do with Community Warfare? Like, what was their, their goal? Persistent universe oh. where you fight to control fronts for your house and your own Merc Corps and make a reputation? Yeah, it was a, a battle board. Kalos? So, like, uh, Chrome Hounds, then. Based on the numbers that uh, Vash just mentioned, the 225.6 million C-bills needed to found a uh, mercenary uh, core, uh, doing the math based on what they told us the numbers for for the average match and such, that's about two and a half hours per million. That breaks down to about 564 man hours of putting into this game just to found this core. Just thought that was interesting. Okay, Tolkien. Uh, no, thank you. The piece I wanted to say on uh, community warfare and the delivery for, or deadline for getting it into the game is basically this has been an ongoing issue since way back in closed beta. Um, initially, the statement oh, was from June 2012 that they expected to have all of the features they talked about in their puffery in the game within 90 days of open beta. Following that, they also reiterated this in Ask the Devs number 30 on the 23rd of January 2013 that it would be in three phases over 2013, followed by an interview at Game Development Conference 2013 when Ekman said it would be in up to launch, all three phases inclusive. So this has been a huge problem with them from the beginning in that you can't really trust them when they give you a deadline. Okay, Iggy. Yeah, to reiterate what Tolkien has said, I, I was there from the beginning of the closed beta. I had um, hell, 30 guys I played with. You know, we had a good group going. We were actively excited about community warfare. You know what I mean? It felt like it was an attainable thing once they went to open beta that we'd reach that. And since then, every new missed deadline has just painfully been one more nail in the coffin to where I'm the only one left that I know of who still plays this game of that group. And it, it's heartbreaking as a fan, it really is. Well, on the subject of the, the beta and their each deadline that they've lost, I've been in so many betas that by the time we started moving toward open beta, I was like, this is not right. This does not feel like any of the other times that I've been in a beta. Normally things come out, you see additions and... Those additions are then refined. Nothing like that had happened. Uh, no, please. It is just to the point where you really can't trust anything that PGI is going to say anymore. Uh, we used to have even one of their one of their community people that was a programmer, who even would show all of the changes that we're going to make, uh, such as the SRM change right before the big nerf that made him absolutely useless again. <laughs> I think we'll all remember but that. Even that has stopped again. As I suppose they just decided, no, we don't want to put up with the community anymore. It's too much work. PGI. It's too much work. Okay, Alex? Uh, you know, people are just so tired by now. Uh, Tolkien mentioned that his friend list is empty, mine is red and dead. I, I'm mine pretty sure too. it's a common aff affliction in the inner sphere right now. It's it's empty. It's one of the saddest things that you can that you can see when you log on to a, any multiplayer yeah. game that your friends simply gave up. Why would you stay? Hey, Tolkien. I just wanted to clarify. I am currently in a tryhard group, and I do enjoy playing with them like once a week. But the friends that I used to play with are people who I actually bought founders packs for as birthday gifts because they were really big fans of BattleTech, and one of them hasn't been in since like. I don't know, May? Oh, my it's the worst God. birthday gift ever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't give me a job. Yeah, We're no longer friends. <laughs> okay, Wallaby. The only thing I want to say about Community Warfare is I just... I'm really looking forward to seeing the look on all the gold's faces when they pay $50 per person to bypass the $18 million grind unless they... Of course, all that's left are ultra golds I've played since the beginning of time, so they probably have that jump change anyway. 
but still. You're going on the assumption, of course, that it's ever going to come. Well, right. yeah, uh, but if there's a possibility that they can monetize, monetize it, they'll probably put it in eventually. Oh, hell yes. Okay, let's... You know what the best part about it is? When they were trying to decide the numbers... You know how they think. We all know how they think. They didn't look at how much people are making. They look at how much people have because they want to drain the coffers. And that is so much money for a new group of people just wanting to get in this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of time. Not to mention you have to, you know, gear out your max, buy max, and all that other fun stuff that's required for the game to actually, you know, be useful. Yeah, let's let's move on to post launch patches. We had the <laughs> we had the Boar's Head Atlas. Oh, oh the Boar's remorse. remorse. The Boar's Remorse. Okay, okay, okay. Wallaby. He actually owns one. Yeah. Like to talk about it. Yes. I the first thing I want to say is uh, about a week or two ago when the Jester came out, I tried to refund the stupid Boar's Remorse, and the only reply I got is, "You played with it too much." So I wasn't happy about that, but because all that time playing with it was spent just trying to find a working build. The, the best thing it could be, ever be was like a 100 I have a generator. question for you. One question. How dumb do you feel for buying it? <laughs> well, I don't feel entirely dumb because we got a, a good few chuckles about me running around in the golden pig. <laughs> <laughs> was it worth the 50 bucks? It Nothing was is not. worth the 50 bucks. Nothing is worth the money in this freaking game. <laughs> You're saying that despite being 100 tons, it wasn't worth the weight? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, you, it only has, oh, it has six no. energy, one ballistic, and one missile. You can't do anything except stick six medium lasers in the AC-20. I've managed to stick an SRM-6 on it, but freaking useless Why? because Why SRM-6. Why do it? Because I can. Because I'm desperate to try and figure out something else to do with the stupid thing. Okay, all right. We're moving on to Vass because he's dying here. Yeah, so they that released the Boris Remorse, you know what I did? I got into my DDC and I started looking for them. I started hunting them. And not a single w time did I actually lose a combat with a fucking Boris Remorse. I was just slaughtering them left and right. There was nothing they could do. Pay to win, not confirmed. Okay, Tolkien. Yeah, how many ECMs does it come with? Because if it's not six, it's not worth the forty dollars. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Alex. When after the patch, there was there there were a lot of them actually. There were a few in yep. every game. Oh yeah, they were and, selling. And honestly, they were pretty much just like Atlas D, and it shows that what really let Atlas have a presence on modern battlefield, so to speak, is the SEM. Because SEM can make it the, the center of the, of the battlefield. Uh, the pig is just, it's just fat. You just shoot it, it is and it's an uh, ECM-less pig without your standard engine. It has an XL. If you poke, it explodes. Yeah, what's with the, what's with the name? I mean... Why is it a pig? Is someone I swear, FPGI making those skins? Yeah, in on I the swear joke they're trolling something? us. That's the only thing I can think of. It's literally a golden pig. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> on the back it says "bore to death," and we all know yeah. that. It's kind of like the the Kentaro Golden Boy, where it just says, "What was it? What did it say on Big there?" Big fat gold. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I swear to God, they're doing. Oh, the other yeah. audience. Wallaby. Uh, the only thing I want to add was the only other build I had actually found fun with it was, in fact, six large lasers. Dude, so six that's, large that's, lasers. Yeah, that's just a yeah. fun build on any mech. Just like... so it has two builds you can do with it. Two. two. Right. So much ghost kit. And the, you, can do that on, yeah. you can do that on awesome. It, $35 mech, two builds. The bigger engine in an Atlas is not a justification. The fact that you have to put most of your weapon systems in your arms, which are primarily used for shielding when you fight, <sighs> is another non-justification. And the fact that it doesn't have a good spread, because they've killed boating, period, means that if weapons are not spread apart well enough, it's an utter failure in offense. So, the boar's head was a complete failure. 
Yeah, it's completely worthless. No, please. And no, no. nowadays, I don't it see was a success. Though. People <laughs> bought it. Yeah, there were a <laughs> they were expecting a there good mech, a I don't know. one now, but there are a lot. On the topic of the name, I mean, maybe Brian was out buying his premium fucking deli meats and boar's head. Yeah. Or he was playing a <laughs> deli he can afford meats. that yeah, because we have given him so much money. Well, the we, golds uh, have given him so much money. No more stop and shop we brand thought, for him. Why wasn't yep. it the Big Ben? Big Ben is like a known, you know, mech or image, the Atlas. Anything. Big Al. Well, no, nothing. Um, RS plus one, that's all you get. Yeah. Have fun. And it was yeah. shit, and no Stop one cared. Stop being so entitled, guys. How about that it's only $50. Yester catapult here with them? The K2 yes. with the dual AMS. Yes. Bill? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't play the game anymore, but I really liked the color scheme of it. And of course. if I had been playing, I probably would have bought it just for the color scheme. Dude, bot. Ah, uh, Jester just makes me sad. I'm a Catapults founder, and I probably have a million XP on my Catapults, and probably a million and a half more on all the dildo shape mix. And I've gone through every single one of the metas on the meta train with cats. I've gone the Goss cats, Black cat, Shotgun cat, Street cat, Laser cats, and the uh, four PPC Lime Ray cats. And the problem with the Jester is that it does not follow any meta at all. And the best build I've seen so far is the Sanix and the two PPC and four me medleys. But uh, the K2, K2 does that just as well, and the Stalker does it better. And I honestly would have paid 60 bucks for this, and it sucks, so I won't. I refuse to grab deal, even though it's called the DudeBot mech, I will not grab deal. Refused? <laughs> no. Iggy? Yeah, anybody remember when they actually used to put effort into the fluff riding for these hero mechs? Oh, I said oh, no, the no I don't. <laughs> wait, wait, well... No, 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 I'm sorry. They, they have never <laughs> put no, any no, actual like, like, errors about way, that. Way back, Garth, they, they, they tried never put to effort. pull it out of their asses a little bit. I think Garth has one tried. copy of a. I think Garth has one copy of a Michael Stackpole novel, and then he just kind of thumbs through it when he's not doing anything, which is that's most of the time, and that's Michael how he gets his <laughs> ideas. <laughs> <laughs> like the quick draw was awful. The Kintaro was all aw the Kintaro was awful and offensive. Even the it old was. ones were bad. <laughs> and you're no, allowed no. to be the Kintaro, the, the Kintaro one. Run. The Kintaro one was forgettable only because NG NG did that other fucking atrocious, atrocious fucking video. What's the one uh, where they had the pirates dead? And the pirates actually said R me mateys or some shit like that. Oh my god! <laughs> do you oh, guys, it the do you guys not remember the abortion that was the Highlander? <laughs> oh no! My, my, that my was point bad. Like the was the, my, it was he bad. It in the, the, high, the Highlander one was kind of funny because of how generic, and generically stereotypical Scottish it was. I, oh, Which uh, is probably the, probably not what they were going for, but still. <laughs> I, I I guess my point before I kicked that hornet's nest was that um, of all of them, this the writing for the jester was particularly heinous. I don't know. I just felt like, <laughs> of like, course. like like somebody wiped his ass and went, oh, this will work, and put it on the website. Yeah, you know, minimal effort. Exactly. Minimal viable okay. Wallaby. I like my master. I do. You bastard. I mean, you bought everything. <laughs> I, I just yes, bought the is. I just bought the boar's head and the freaking jester. That's all. I like yeah, my, only I like the two most you only bought the two most expensive in the game. Gold apologist detective. <laughs> no, I, I I like I like being able to um. You like being just, good going, but you like being able to breathe my, through your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. being able to breathe. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Vass. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's uh, it's a quick draw K. Uh, with varied uh, gun placement and less jump jets. That's, that's really medium. it. Because we all know that's... quick draw is the best medium no matter what they say about Quick the draw is a stupid ass heavy, but that's not the point. The point is, it has the exact same shit as the quick draw with the lasers minus one AMS. I don't know why, what the fuck PGI was thinking. Did not grab. Did not grab. Okay, angry iron worker. 
I'm probably going to kick over another Hordeness Nest for this, but um, if I remember my Battletech well, I remember the Catapult being a purely support mech. So why are they releasing one that's supposed to be a f completely pure frontline fighter? The K2 was not a support mech. No, it was a ballistic support mech, no? Direct fire? Direct, direct fire, yeah. Direct fire. But but the point is, also, why does has PGI enough... have to be bound by cannon? I mean, <laughs> they, they, they obviously, obviously are a little not. fucking late for that. <laughs> okay, the Alex. The whole point is, yeah, go on. You know, it's a it's a K two with jump jet and twin AMS. If Max PPC meta game was still alive, I would cry foul. At this point, I don't think it really matters anymore. Maybe that's why they released it, so people couldn't cry foul. They could go, oh, so we don't balance by grab deal. And then next next hero mech, oh man, it's gonna be totally balanced for the meta game. Wait, wait. Laser? I know I might touch on this later, but I think the inclusion of the small lasers in the nose, I'd really still like to see a range increase to 120 or 140 um... meters in the small lasers. Um. Okay, so Crimson Straight. <laughs> oh, God. It's an okay map. The only problem oh. is it's exactly like I predicted. It's like two paths. Two fucking paths. Yes, walk towards the garage and kill each other. Sometimes you get dudes who want to sit on the island. Sometimes you don't. And then it's over in three minutes. Hooray! Okay. You can't go anywhere because of Invisible. But hey. Wallaby? I I was going to say that they did a good job on the top half of the map because there's fighting all over the top half, but then I remembered there's nobody I've never seen any anybody, anybody actually fight near the top base, so it's only like the north the middle and the north whatever east. That's all the fight. That's where all the fighting is. Nothing else. The entire rest of the map is useless. Yeah. Yep. Laser. What I've noticed is, back when I was still playing, there was a lot of hit box issues with some of the objects, like terrain elements, and plants, and antennas on tops of buildings. You mean like tourmaline? Visit my channel for further proof! Ten, 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 ten. Thatchery? Um, I haven't really analyzed the map or anything, like I haven't really, like, when playing it I didn't super look at everything, but the two things that really stuck out were the it was the tunnel and like the overpass, um, assuming I have the correct map. Um, and I it was neat to see that they did like a map that had some vertical design to it, like an upper level and a lower level, but I think it's a little, I don't know, it feels a little late for that, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Should have been one of the first ones. Like it's a neat new gameplay idea to have like an upper level and a lower level on a map, but it just feels like the game just isn't built for that at all, you know? Yeah, angry iron worker. One thing that's kind of irked me on the uh, design uh, point is the uh, the red water, which PGI is hand-waved as being naphthalene, which, <laughs> if you go and do your research, is terribly, terribly dangerous to people. God. Oh, laser. Jeez, I forgot what I was going to talk about on Crimson Straits now. Well, someone in chat was it the is mountain? asking me to... No, it wasn't the mountain. Oh, the vertical design. When the... I get stuck on a building. I have many of those. Many, many of those. I think we'll throw the channel in a note once I'm recording, actually. Because it's funny. Okay, but on, on, on the vertical it. design. Yeah, like uh, the tunnels? Or the overpass that I think that tree mentioned earlier. I really wish we had some of those things on Alpine, like a tunnel through a mountain or oh, a yeah. bridge spanning yes. across a, a a big gorge. A bunker complex. Yeah, and and the thing is, you need to make it interesting enough that people would actually go there. Otherwise, it's just an unused portion of the map that you spent time and polygons on. The thing that I think like is 90 just of gross and disgusting about that map is if you get like four light max, like four spiders, just climb the fucking mountain, you can see everything, and then jump off and cap. Right yeah. there. I actually remember I noticed mechs that can't aim up or aim down properly, and other mechs can aim lower are like, it's a really big handicap. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, I guess we'll move on to our next topic here. The boar's head cannot aim up. <laughs> 
Alex wants some before you switch topic. What is it, Alex? Since I'm a representative of the faction that plays the game on a potato computer made of cardboard, I have noticed a very interesting <laughs> thing, dedication that uh, the developers have to make to optimize uh, the game for lower end PCs because one of the new assets on the map is those trees, right? The tree something. Potato tree. Uh, so, yeah, the tree. Uh, so at 130 meters, uh, at lowest settings, there is no foliage on it. There are no leaves or anything. They only appear below 120 meters in plain sight. And then you have four different LODs with, uh, from 120 to 50 meters. What it means is basically the trees for most of the playtime look like uh, a bunch of cigarette butts. That's, that's pretty impressive downsizing, I suppose. I'll make sure to include a picture of it in the show notes. Uh, uh, please don't, it's embarrassing to put it. <laughs> <laughs> no choice now, mister. Now the whole world will know your game. Oh. Alright, so we were on light mech speed <coughs> limit increases. Who's ready for lag shields? Yeah, uh... No, uh, please. Well, what did it just increase to? It used to be that it was one right under 130. Uh, this was in closed beta. And oh, there were you really haven't very played many problems. Oh, forever. yeah. Then it was that FTL went up to drives. nearly. Then it went up to nearly 145. Uh, I think wonderful. when I stopped, it was around 155. Was what my Raven 3L was hitting. Yeah. I have a uh, question. Is this the second or the previous one that we just never got around to reporting? This is the la- the most recent one. The with right. the Locust release with Phoenix. Yes, with the Locust release. Okay. And now it's, you say, 155 for Light Max. No, no, it's no, 171 no, no, now. No, no, no. For certain variants. Okay. 171. Full 20. So they still haven't been able to actually fix the lag shield. Even if they nope. weren't going... Even if they weren't going that fast. Uh, when I played just a couple weeks ago, probably like eight weeks ago, uh, I still couldn't hit a fucking spider that was just standing there. Oh, just that's standing because there. spiders... They're well-designed, yeah, well-crafted. Or yes, commandos. sloped armor. Jenners, though, Why I can hit Jenners. Them? Yeah, yes. But there's nothing wrong with spiders. Mm-mm. Nope, yeah, nothing at all. So. Nothing at all. PDR says so. I just want to know what is going through their heads that they can still increase the speed without being able to make everything be hit, even at the current speed, or even the speed before then. Nothing is going through their heads. For all of the changes that they've made that's going to make it better, it's done nothing but make it worse. And now they're going to make it even more worse. That's basically the their entire development philosophy right there. What can we make worse in the name of making it better? <laughs> All right. Thatchery? Um, I'm an AC40 user myself, and I like lights are just a bitch when you're using that. But I had it happen to me actually just the other day. I, I didn't realize there was a change with the speed in Light Max. Like, I hadn't been keeping up with the patch notes. But I had had it happen, like personal experience, where a light had shut down from overheating, and... I fired directly at the center, like, dead on, and I have good internet, went right through them. Yeah, that's what you get. But there's nothing wrong with spiders, remember, it's all in your mind, all in your head. I mean, the armored I maids, the bullets go right through it. Going bullets pass through spiders. The mechs that got their speed increased were the awful variants for the most part. Yes. No ECM, no Jenner. And for some reason, the Ravens didn't get on board, but whatever. Uh, still, it doesn't really change the way the game is played. You, they are still not faster than streaks, so nobody really cares. I mean, it's good that they improved the engine, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there comes a point. You can yeah. disengage from anything in this game anyway. It is true. Let's move on to... The board mo- cube. Yeah, the board cube. What about hitboxes? <laughs> well, we just sort of kind of covered it. And, well, like... I-, I think overall on the shit mech hitbox fixes that they touched upon, they made the atlas's size oh, larger. Yeah. 
The awesome CT is still it's a barn nice. door, but they gave it pants. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, nothing dude. changed for the <laughs> shit mech yeah. hitboxes. Except, oh, no. except the modeling the is the problem, right? now yeah. has like small side horses. It's like you can splash damage across. Everything else got better or got like worse or unchanged. Alright, Tolkien. But yeah, I just wanted to say that I still haven't seen uh, Awesomes tearing up the competitive, but what I have noticed is that ah. the uh, Atlas's crotch is no longer a giant center torso extension, so that's something positive, right? <laughs> uh, there's uh. that. Rip Awesome. Uh, on the new hitboxes, uh, the Orions, I went and got an Orion, the Orions because of MechWarrior 3, of course, and um, I will say that I've seen a slight increase in their survivability, but just yeah. very slight. Okay. They did them good. Lug? Uh, yeah, as an awesome pilot, I want to say that in all the matches I've played since the patch dropped, not a single time have I lost a side torso before my center torso, so yay hitbox updates. Amazing. They just don't, they just don't like your awesome, do they? <laughs> maybe if they fucking made it less wide. Oh, uh, maybe. Right. Seriously, the awesome looks like it belongs in fucking Hitamari Sketch. I fucking <laughs> knew you were going to say that, you goddamn weeaboo. <laughs> I'm surprised well, nobody away said from it saying yet. That myself. God fucking damn it. Well, to be honest. Shut up, Moaz. <laughs> <laughs> no. To be fair. On to, to the board, to be fairly you, honest. To be uh, honestly gentleman. fair. All right, all right. So we got a, a new map up, the Borg Cube. I put up an no, image of the it. The map isn't up, but we have an image yeah. and we got a Twitch video of it. Well, all right. All right. I'm <laughs> to talking be about announced, topic. but we call it the Borg Cube. All right. So who's first here, Wallaby? Just from looking at what the image we have of it from the Twitch video, it it looks like was it Mordor 2.0? Like oh yeah. You know how, how everyone just runs to the center, it's just a bigger cal caldera, and it's cold. That's it. <laughs> it's in space. Yeah. It's, 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 it's in just, space. And it has, some, it has uh. some, like, cover in it, because I don't know. If you oh, jump and, it, uh, and you, you have to get, get inside of it, because... Is there low gravity on the map? No. 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 It's 1G. No, no graphic so cool. effects, no fucking anything. It's just yeah, no and, anything. The spider jump gets and, and, and he just leaves the map. thousands of tons of mech battling on, are on top of the actual building of the moon base that will supposedly, like, depressurize if it's, like, Because exploded. reasons. Because reasons. Not to mention, like they, uh, they can't just build, Comstar like, and their guard, they would just... What the it's fuck are you doing here? It seriously looks like that fucking Hawking virus. That's what fucking. It looks does. Like. It's a they, fucking Hawking virus. The Hawking. The Hawking. Um, okay. Okay. Pack object. Dot hey, and took all the textures. Well, two things. Number one, they missed an opportunity to try to do something with low grav, which is really sad. Really. Well, they'd have to program it, and that would, but, you know, take work. Number two, it looks like they took an entire level of. A damage text mesh, uh, the mesh, the old damage text mesh, and it looks like they made an entire level out of it. <laughs> or am I the only one that saw, sees that? No, no I you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, Alex? All I want to say is that I love Total Annihilation, so I'm glad we get to visit the, the, the Core Prime. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Core Prime. Battery. Uh, the map has a lot of, like, vertical design going on, uh, which is what they did in uh, the other River City map you guys have mentioned, but um, I, I, I don't know. It seems like there's one big choke point in the map right in the center, and I don't know, that just seems like a design nightmare. When I looked at this yeah. map, I saw it... Well, the first time they showed us this, they didn't even give us the aerial view. They gave us, a, like, a first-person view, and he was running around in, like, a Jenner or whatever. And when I started seeing a it... A prison locust, it looked, might I add. Yeah, prison in locust. third person. It looked all right, but then the moment he zooms out, it's like, oh, it's like they took all the good parts of Canyon Network, and then they shoved it into the center, like, into a small area, and then they took the shitty parts of all the other maps and just threw it on. Like, oh, yeah, look, you know. look at it, it's just gonna be more long-range shooting with walking around in, like, a cave or something. 
<laughs> it's going to be great. And roundabout back cap, that's about it. Yeah, and we get to drill for Gundanium inside of the HP. Comstar totally would approve of that. Totally would. Uh, what Vass said actually was going to be my point. You know, you guys mentioned that they could have played with some sort of zero-G thing here. They could have also, if this is supposed to be an HPG structure, they could have given us something that was supposed to be, you know, fluff and flavor behind it. You know, uh, why are we there? You know, make it a busted HPG or something, you know, and oh, You do remember something. that this is just an arena shooter, and that's all it's going to be for a long yes. time, right? But damn yeah. it, I can dream, can't I? No! Your, your dreams are dead. You, you actually have to pay to dream. You have That's to pay to it. Damn it. Well, it's only their dreams, not yours. Yeah. You're just there for the ride. Laser? I just wanted to mention that this uh, reveal of the... Wasn't it a UI 2.0 and HPG moon base reveal on Twitch? It was completely unplanned. I sort of stumbled upon it because I've subscribed to Brian's Twitch uh, stream. So whenever he st starts to stream something on his Twitch channel, I get an email, and I just realize that at the time, I, I don't know if I was at work or at home, that, holy crap, Brian's streaming something. I need to let everyone know, because no one's going to remember this. Hey, let's... It's just a small thing, but if you watch the stream for the entire time, which I did, you'll notice that Brian, in every video I've ever seen of him, he never smiles, he never looks interested or happy. He just looks kind of pissed off or not happy or just yeah, he's at work upset with life in general it's kind of sad really yeah talking okay what is it yes i don't know i think you're misreading his face i think he's just in stunned awe of his creation because it is in the best shape it's ever been <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with that. that. No, I, 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 no, no, I have videos that, that prove that wrong. No, he's, I'm afraid you're on kind of is, an island there, buddy. Yeah, he's worried because he's looking at all those people trapped on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> God. <laughs> Excellent. Ekman's Island. Yes, Ekman's Island. <laughs> like that Robinson is... Crusoe, not a single luxury. Oh. Not even the lost tech of good textures. Yeah, what happened to our lost tech? Gone. Vanished. Okay, so we've got... This one is pretty good. Map clipping. <laughs> this one isn't too recent, but recent enough. Um, somehow, in the Jenga code, they fucked up the uh, map on River City. So basically, you could climb inside of the Comstar building. Yes. <laughs> Bass, oh, would you like to talk we about were, it? We were fucking around on River City, as we normally do, trying to get some fun out of it. Minimum viable, I might add. Anyway, me and Jack were screwing around, and Kios there with us. But for some reason, we decided we want to land on top of uh, the Comstar building. But we can't. And we just, we sink straight through. Straight through. And from there on out, the fun began. Turns out that inside the Comstar building, there is this base and can actually exist inside with your robots. But once robots are in there, they cannot get out unless they do a whole lot of wiggling, which we have video proof of. Okay, so <laughs> Tolkien, you've got a comment on that? Yeah, I've noticed that uh, in a couple of our matches, we've had spiders get stuck on the wall going into the caldera. And that's kind of strange, because once they get stuck up against that wall, they don't seem to be able to get down, and they flail around while we shoot their limbs off with AC-20s. Oh yeah, that's an old bug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old bug. Yeah, old bug. Dated to September 2012, circa... Mm. The only new bugs that PGI ever has are... New incarnations of old bugs. Okay. Iggy. Sometimes they mutate, though. Yeah, they do. Yeah. True. They say, true. I was going to say, I would argue that Vass's experience is fully supported by the canon. You know, mechs hiding in buildings, being all stealthy, you know, engaging with their <laughs> environment. So I would write this one, gentlemen. I declare oh, this one this. working as intended. You're, you're, you're doing it, Joseph it, Is Milan. it immersion? Please stop this. <laughs> it is immersion! We well, you know, spiders are all in my own Exactly. 
like talking to fucking Nigel Thornberry. Well, you know. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> In my battle tech, they would hide inside buildings. I've never heard of this happening in MechWarrior well, Online, but you never it. know. We've seen it with oh, these two eyes, beautiful. Connor. Mark one eyeball never lies. Okay, Alex, what do you got? I got stuck uh, just, I think, two weeks ago on uh, in Mordor. Uh, I got stuck <laughs> between, the si between the side of a mountain and a building, and when I finally was put out of my misery... My, half of my mech's torso clipped through the ground, all my limbs oh, fell off, started falling down, then they slowly came back up and reattached to my dead body. And that's how it stayed. Yes. So, it's a very interesting mutation. It's always entertaining. Fun game. Just like a real Very life. fun game. So yeah, very I'm, sure, so. I'm sure Canon supports it somehow. We just have to look deeper. Does Crimson have clipping issues? No, Crimson does not have clipping issues. Why? 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 Why would make you question this? I mean, well, I don't know. it's not like I have an entire YouTube of fucking clim Crimson clipping videos. Oh, uh, okay. That was just my assumption because I was looking at your YouTube videos and it looked like you kind of had them. Well, you know, obviously fabrication, Photoshop. Might have used GIMP once or twice, you know. You used Blender. You're hacking with yeah, Blender. Yeah, I used Blender to hack PGI's gameplay while I was playing. How I came up with all those cool effects. Did you just admit that? Yes. That's a bannable offense. You know when you log back in, you're banned, right? <laughs> Nico the Parmat Overlord has already banned, pre banned you anyway. Yeah, he's already heard this. He's sitting by as we speak, isn't he? He's like, oh he's my god. He's the presenter marshal. Yes, he's here. He's right here. We can't see him. You gotta watch out for Gestapo, man. Presence. He's everywhere. Yeah, Crimson is made of fucking clipping issues. Doesn't matter where you go or what you do, you get stuck on ev okay. everything. So, here recently, and I actually got to see this, was the uh, superhero sale. They had the Golden Boy, the Protector, <laughs> and all oh, those desperate. all those mechs desperate. that haven't been around for a while, and they're like 50 to 30% desperate. off. Desperate. Your turn. Desperate. 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 Oh, the sound God. they'll make rattling their cage will serve as a warning to the electronic old men. I mean, the ones that play well, this game or the ones on that... Yeah, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. But seriously, uh, go It's hard not Boy, to quote that video, I'm sorry. 30% <laughs> discount. It came out in July. 30% discount. Hector came out in August. 30% discount came out in August. 30 days of premium time. 40% discount. Now, the question is, who the fuck plays the game that long? Seriously. Seriously, who the fuck plays that long? Death there okay. was also laser. Yeah, there was also the dragon. Oh, I was just gonna say the same thing that Visago did. That who plays yeah. the game for thirty days that they're going to need a discount on thirty on thirty day premium. I think I got thirty days. Was it thirty days or sixty? I think it was thirty days of premium with my um, mid level founders pack. And it's honestly, sixty. Oh, you oh, get Jesus. sixty with your. I played that. I played for sixty days straight. Holy fuck. Um, I activated it last year um, in hopes of getting enough money to buy my Highlanders, and it was just—it <laughs> felt like a second job. I had no fun playing that game after like the third week, but I felt like I had to. Or I was just burning money. There had okay. they had some other not very interesting old meta robots up then, like the heavy metal. But fuck heavy metal. Heavy metal. Let's Vulcan. go on. I'd just on. like to point out that one of the things people have been asking for for a long time but are, of course, never going to get is a saner system for premium time. Because having four months of premium time activated all in a slot usually doesn't accommodate life so well. Whereas in other games, I think like LOL, you can have uh, premium time based on number of boop, matches boop, boop, boop. It's a World of Warcraft, does it? I thought it was World yeah, of yeah, Tanks. Uh, my entitlement. Yeah, World of Tanks. Uh, tanks. It, it ticks regardless of your sleep or awake. Like... A salvage device, and you can activate it during a good game so you get your maximum salvage. Oh, no, I think no. in some games it is even wins, not just matches. Oh, yeah. 
Can't do that. Can't. Yep. Yeah, I know. Wrong Possible. game. Impossible. Next Let's topic. talk about something that's kind of disturbing, kind of shocking to some. You were, well, I mean, you yeah, you were in a catapult and you were displaying your cancer to us. Oh, it had tumors all over the ears and everything. Oh man, what the fuck did you do to my catapult, Paul? Why, why did you do that? Oh. <laughs> they fucked that up so hardcore. Oh, you? that was terrible. Congratulations, yeah. you have recreated the MechWarrior Tactics catapult. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. It's the MechWarrior Tactics catapult now with bonus VCRs. I know. It looked, oh. I'm looking at it in the mech bay right now, and it looks so asinine. I have six SRM6. I don't need all yeah, It's beautiful. I don't need missile pods. They go all fit in the. In no, the ones no, no. It's important that we have the pods outside the pods. <laughs> you guys, so we can have more pods. Come on, let talk and talk. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to say that it, it's nice that I, I finally can stop damning this game with faint praise because I used to say, yeah, I mean, Flying Debris has done an awesome job on the artwork, but they finally yeah. fixed that one remaining bug and they've made the it catapult true. absolutely it's true. fugly. True, the catapult is. Fucking atrocious now. What's next? <laughs> fucking nailed it. What the fuck <laughs> is next? The ca the hunchback? Are they gonna fuglify the hunchback? Yeah, fucking it hole has in to one. Be next. You got it right there. Okay. It okay. has to be next. Iggy. I swear it. Or is that that was actually gonna be my comment is they've done this to probably and arguably the most beautiful mech model in the game. Yes, by far. Well, maybe. You know, know. doesn't care. Yeah, what? But I mean, what's next? Are they going to go back? Are they going to ruin the Hunchback? You know, are they just going to completely finish butchering? The no, Atlas? they did that to the Hunchback. The Founders colors, remember? Yeah, but the oh, Hunchback yeah, yeah. needs models. But they're I, gonna, I know, they're going to put it up. I just with the Hunchback, where you've got that great big, you know, some call it ugly, some call it beautiful thing on the shoulder. You know what I mean? If Piggy really wanted to, they could just make it the most atrocious grab bag of suck ever. And that we kind need, of well, really, really bothers me. We need to balance it. It gives the idea that that should be what mediums should be sized at, you know? They're given, they're given the Yo, wrong man. idea with scale. Okay, so who are we moving on to? Uh, Alex? Or is it Kalos? Uh, well, yeah, Kalos first. Well, I figured it out, guys. Due to declining sales and the need to centralize, they're going to hire the art department for McQuarrie Tactics. That's got to be it. What declining sales? What sales to begin with? We have a large and diverse player base. <laughs> when th this game is in the best shape it's ever been. Oh, you are an island. Pizza. Okay, Alex. Well, I have suffered a lot from the ears, I guess, of catapults, so I should be feeling some sort of Schadenfreude, I suppose. But at the same time, it's really Sad to see the last pillar, the mech warfare, crumbling before our very ears. Eyes. <laughs> crumbling before our ears. very eyes. And, well, there will, after the mech designs go, there will be simply nothing standing. The mech designs were the only thing that I, anyone can say, I guess it's beautiful about this game, not just adequate. Yeah. And now they reckon even this, the fields burned and salted. Yeah, next up is indeed the Hunchback, because this was the second to last of the Founders mechs. Firm, catapult, first they did the Jenner, then the Ath, catapult. Next I don't month see we're gonna see what they're doing something. Beautiful. Yeah, they're gonna do something beautiful with all the Hunchbacks next month. Don't you dare uh, touch my you, 4GF. You keep your mouth shut. They will. Oh, Elkin. they will. They're gonna ruin them all with VCRs and duct tape. Oh. <laughs> Just wait for it. One big cannon uh, and this two is what machine you... guns duct taped to them. Can on, you imagine when you put like triple PPC test of something in a single SR? Oh, it's gonna be well we're heading into. Come on, Tolkien, what do you got? I was just going to say that when they came for the Atlas's eye glow, I, I didn't complain because, you know, I didn't really pilot an Atlas then. Well, do you and remember then when, they when came you would get the... sniped? Because they could see oh, yeah, from headshots from the base. Yeah, the base was deadly in those days. Go on, talk, yeah. But then also, when they took the Centurion AH out and made it into the Yenlo Wang as a champion mech, I didn't complain because I didn't drive a Centurion. 
Now they're I coming guess. and they're strapping some extra missile tubes onto the catapult, and there's no one left to complain for me. <laughs> sad but true. Sad but true. Very, very sad and very... Well, I was just going to say that, you know, it's just once the Hunchback actually gets uglified, it'll just be one more reason why the Centurion is and always was the superior medium mech. Is it a medium? I don't know. I never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, unquote, medium mech? Oh, man. I, thought not sure I never they... noticed that hunchbacks were deadly either, but, you know, apparently they are, or else so many people wouldn't use them. Because they're idiots. Yeah. Let's go on to the new modules. Yeah, we Seismic the was... Super thick. Seismic was nerfed into the frickin' ground. Yes, you now have to be stationary to use it. Rip in pieces. Now they only need to cut it out. Cut it out and I'll forget it even I. Okay. Tolkien. I I have to say that the seismic is actually where it should have been from the beginning. None of this bloody 400 meter OAC across half the map, what's happening over there. But I need my wall hacks. We should have had radar to begin with. (laughs) I have to say, though, the the new gyro module is actually worth using, unlike the new hill climb module, which is absolutely shambolic. I have a link here to an analysis of it, if you'd like. I'll put in the show notes. We have a link to the hill climb and how worthless it is. We are not too proud. It's truly as worthless. We will put up your plugs. Damn right. Okay, Uh dude butt. I'd just like to mention the forum response for the seismic nerfs, where people were just going batshit insane with it. Um, I'd imagine that some of the people that were most violent about the nerf were people that put literally 20 modules on all their mechs, and now they have like $100 million worth of uh, worthless shit. Yep. <laughs> hey, let's... I really like how they've taken these various forms of GUI information that we have, we, these various forms of movement, they nerf them, and then they sell them back to us as modules. Yes. Does anybody else of find course. that interesting? Because they I have no it. more ideas for modules? I called it. It was a fucking joke. I told you they would do it. I, I did it. The They're day. selling They're you back your mech functionality. They're selling me module back Module by nigga. module. They're selling me back giga nigga. Pay, pay to have a functional mech. Pay to giga Good nigga. Game. Why? Why did they do pay this to return to me? To closed beta? It's a whole different way on pay to play. <laughs> GG. Oh, God. G- Tolkien. Now, I haven't confirmed this yet, but similar to what you're saying, it sounds as though the new gyro module acts, actually helps reduce jump jet shakes. It seems as though they, they put that in to ruin the jump jet sniping experience, but now they'll give you a module Pay that to gets rid of it. Pay, yeah, to, pay, pop to, pay to win, in the quite literal sense. Pay to pop tart, and it also makes you immune to AC2 and LRM shakes. What else is here? On uh, mediums and above. Okay, so we're going to move on from that to... They have premium. Really oh quickly, boy. as an addendum to what I was saying, it's like they're taking parts of our dreams too and selling them back to us in little bits <laughs> and pieces. They are. I'm sorry, but my really dream are. is not the. Well, my dream was to have a good Mech Warrior game, and Mine too. I only have little bits and pieces of one. Uh, and we'll we'll have even less soon. So we had the November public tests for UE 2.0. Could you tell us about that, Vass? You have a recording of it here. November test, uh, UI testing, it worked well. Did it look any different? It looked like shit. It looked like some kind of UI you'd find on an Xbox game. It was atrocious. Then I managed to... Basically, you have to click one button, and then you go into a menu. You click that button, you go into another menu. Click that button, you go into another menu. There you buy your shit. Then go all the way out, and there's your stuff. Through using this, I bought like 30 Atlas Ks. I tried to re-equip them. Client crashed, of course. Then get back in. Try to drop. Client crashed, of course. I unequipped one. Worked and saved, everything was fine. Then I tried to put an AC20 on it. It saved, client crashed. And that was the end of that. That's all the testing I did. Okay, Tolkien? It's a beta verse. 
Yeah, just I'd like to comment that if you go to the uh, Piranha Games website and you think you can do a better job on UI 2.0, in fact, they are hiring a user interface designer, and I wonder <laughs> why. But they've been doing that oh, since uh, January 2001, 2013. As a quick addition, yeah. they pay an MC, though, so keep that yeah. in mind. Oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> MC and Zins. Didn't somebody come out and say that they had tried to apply for PGI's uh, web you know, engineer position or whatever, and they basically wanted them to work unpaid for a month and a half or something like that before As they would bring them on? As an intern for a test, like, yeah. uh, run, basically. We don't yeah. know. That's such shit. Been... Like a probationary we period. We don't know if it was real, though. Yeah. Uh, we don't know, so... It would surprise don't... me. It Alps? wouldn't me either, but still. This is about DX11. Well, we can go talk about that now, but what about DirectX11? Alright, so, let's be optimistic here. Let's say that everything in DX11 worked perfectly fine, and there was no problems, it was in the best state it's ever been. Alright, so now we got DX11. But, how many people, how many of the old men, actually have cards that support DX11? It'd be a catastrophe regardless. Well, yeah... Plus, it doesn't actually change the fact the game is boring oh, now. Direct oh, you can no still run in DX9. Don't worry, they won't, they won't get rid to of get that. get Tessellation in. My dual so, card. Oh, yeah. Alright, Laser? I just wanted to point out that you get the same thing in Star Citizen, that there are many people who don't have a computer <laughs> that can even run the hangar module. Yeah. <laughs> the difference Hello? is Chris says, get wrecked. The only thing I wanted to say is that I can't do any public tests because they run them in such short spans of time that I work during that time. And yeah, I'm sure that's it's why. completely, they it's do completely why. impossible for anyone else to. They that's do it during why. work hours, and they do it where it's it's in such a narrow window, you're lucky if you take part of it. Shouldn't we know where Wally at least lives? I mean, we don't need his address, we but... We glad that BGI ah, is allowing Virginia. you to test their software. Uh, they do it so, so yes. minimal. Stop being so entitled. entitled. It's time to talk about Project Phoenix, the never-ending grab deal from June to December. Oh man! It was never-ending at one point until yes. just three days ago, where they finally announced yeah. an, an end date for it. So, as everybody knows, they started this shit back in June, right? Right. And then and they, they had said to feel exclusive. Good bar. Yeah, they they said that it was gonna be an exclusive. Like you could you could have this exclusive robot collection, right? Yeah, kind of exclusive, kind of rare robot feel with a feel good bar and all that shit. And then going and going and going and going and going and going. And sometime around the end of August, yes, around the end of August, from June to August. It finally maxed out the feel good bar. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone Tolkien? know? Yes, Tolkien? Yes, I just wanted to say that it was really hilarious during the Phoenix program how people thought this bar with no numbers on it, unlike Star Citizen, was actually a bar that had any sort of unit associated with it, except for <laughs> it was going to fill up as a marketing exercise to make you feel good about grabbing that deal. Yeah, well, the other part that's very... Sorry, I have one more point. It's the camouflage. During the entire process, it said oh. exclusive flame camo. Yeah, And when you see a deal that you can buy and you see exclusive camo, anyone who has two functioning brain cells knows that 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 means that it's exclusive to the people who buy the camo. <laughs> but PGI changed the definition of exclusive to mean exclusive like McDonald's, in that it's exclusive Value to people add. who come in and pay them a dollar. They didn't See, change anything. You're... All they changed was their position at the time. Oh, come on. Uh, no, come you and your definition on, are just on an gotta island. Gotta give it the time. They the worst their island at the time. The worst part was when someone like was picking up how the hell the fucking phoenix bar worked it was like oh it just comes like this then they started like editing it a little bit and having a little distance five million dollars no he each. didn't do anything different all he did was he went up and he said yes it goes up in 10 percent increments and here you go and he pointed out all they were and it was pointless anyway so yes. right it, he unveiled the I fact that there was nothing there this. okay vass yeah, at the launch party that totally wasn't a fucking drag, someone approached Big Boss PGI himself and asked how much that whole feel-good bar was supposed to represent. 
And the answer was about 1.5 million dollars. So take it out, take it or leave it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was at least over a million. I the quote gets muddled um, now. It's 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 it, been so it long since be. we've discussed this. I mean, uh, compared to Star the person Citizen, who said it not said allowed. one million. He didn't say <laughs> one point five. They said just over a million. Yeah. Was it wow. in Monopoly money? It was in MC. <laughs> Let's say one million and some spare. Like one million and change. Alex? Well, it still worked. It worked like a charm. The exclusivity, the unseen. Everyone <laughs> has the star. On the forum, everybody Red has, star, has as far the star. As I can see. Everybody has the star. Oh, okay. Man. Um, um, we're moving on the to the names. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got the prison locust, which is just the ball and chain. <laughs> then Completely we've, worthless. Twenty then we've tons got, of four machine guns. Then we've got <laughs> DJ Quad City Shack Attack the Shadowhawk. <laughs> the best Phoenix. Yeah. So we got the Shack, which is the Shadowhawk. Then we've got the Blunderbolt, which is the Thunderbolt. Completely worthless. Here's the best one. The one that we thought was going to be pay to win, have fun, ended up being pretty shitty compared to what you could already get. It's called the Battle Master. It's also been known as the Awesome 2.0, the Battle Good Master, reason. the Blarg, the fucking Crotch the Master. Crotch Master. I could change that now. The Blunder. The Blunder Master. Oh, it's so terrible. And people paid 80 fucking bucks for this shit. Oh my god. Lug, what do you got to oh. say? Uh, just hey. a quick question in general. Uh, does anyone know how long Phoenix package lasted up for sale in compared to the original Founders package? Oh, wow. Uh, um, Founders was, what, like four months? August? Yeah, four uh, and, months or something. I thought it ended in... Yeah, it ended in August, didn't it? It ended August 28th. Just That's... call Tolkien. He knows all. Tolkien. Yeah. It probably started in May. Yeah, I don't know all, but I'm under the impression that uh, Founders was available slightly before they were letting Founders in just for buying it. So I was one of the people who got into the closed beta, and then when they announced they would let Founders in once they bought one, I just bought one anyway. But I believe that was after July, so it was like July to August if you're saying it ended in August. They ended it late August, I remember that much. Yeah, I remember it was like six weeks. August 7th. I remember I bought it maybe a day or two before August 7th, and then they extended it. <laughs> it was definitely available long before uh, long before it actually went out. Uh, I want to say it started in in May. Yeah. I'm May is sure the, 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 the date I remember. It started in May. Somewhere around May. Because May closed beta, I got in on the first wave, and that was in April, I believe. Late April, if not early May. Because I didn't let's, get in. Let's on go the with May. Beta. May to, to August. That, yeah. Those are some good dates. So we're moving on here to the maturing Metacritic reviews. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be good. <laughs> so, Alex has something been... to say. How oh, does he? All right, Alex. It's official. The Archon has no clothes. <laughs> Everyone can go can home. say that again. <laughs> God. A six. A strong six. That's all this game got. Hey, 6.6, 6, man. Gotta give in, it... In this oh, in, it totally deserves it. Oh. In this industry, like, even with the, infl- can't the, even get a the inflated scores seven. is like a death sentence. Vulcan. Yeah, yeah. I have to say though that PC Gamer, much like Alien Colonial Marine, was not afraid to say that this is a diamond in the rough and really shines. Yeah, through. with like eighty nine and eighty. And Dragon Age two. <laughs> Darker and sexier. Oh no, that's for a different discussion. discussion no, the best is part. A mech warrior. <laughs> the best part when there were a few uh, paragons in the community 
who had a call to arms that they needed to pre- oh, protect yes. the Metascore. Feel the shill. And oh, when, they, when they ran to protect it, instead it did the exact opposite. Uh, positive reviews were pouring in and negatives were trickling in. So all of those positive scores got cut down immediately. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious when Phil and even Garth called okay. for Metacritic to cut views. But all, the only thing they cut was all the mass spam, the tens and nines. Leaving us at 6.6. Tolkien? From what I can recall with the user score, when um, Bombadil said that people should take to the Metacritic and defend uh, PGI and the game's honor, that it ended up axing <laughs> about 100 positive reviews and only 30 negatives. So it seems as though there was much more on the positive bombing side going on. Uh, oh yeah, they got to protect their little corner. <laughs> it's their meal ticket. Yeah, man, it's their meal the ticket. Don't with... protect. The problem with protecting your corner is that when the building's on fire, the corner will eventually, you know, ignite as well. Well, they're they're paying attention to that bird. You know, the, the canary in the coal mine. Oh, oh, canaries in coal mines. Yes, yes. The players are the canaries, and we've yes. all died. Yes. Okay. Uh, did I call Tolkien r and on this? or no, Call me again, why not? Um, All right. Actually, I, I actually like the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast just because you actually occasionally get to hear something out of a dev. But uh, I do have to admit that in addition to having gold vision, I also gave the No Guts, No Galaxy guys 50 bucks last year because I didn't realize that they were, well, getting paid on the side. <laughs> yeah, well, they, don't, uh, they aren't very keen on making that known. Well, they're entertainers. They're not really a news source, remember? I have to contradict you there and say that you guys are the entertainers. Those guys yes. are the official newspaper of what's Those happening are the PGI. official. No, they, no, are no, the, no. they are the state they, media. They went they to uh, Reddit, and they said they are not a media source. They're oh, not this, reporters. They're entertainment news. So they only represent what they think. Oh, but then they say that they represent the community. Now I'm getting confused. Okay. Rumor has it that something went down with their PayPal account because they were saying on the last podcast that their funds are essentially frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Rip in g and Let's hope it stay, stays that way. Okay, no please. Well, didn't... Now correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't NGNG originally like not paid by PGI and then it started to become paid by BGI yep. and then turned into shilling? That's pretty yep. much exactly how it was. That's mm-hmm. how it was. I, I used yeah. to listen to them back before they were able to talk about MDBO because they were still under the NDA, uh, like yeah. everybody yeah. else, and they were actually pretty entertaining. They talked to Adam Mech of the Week, where they talked about you know a certain Mech chassis and the available variants for it, and, and it was just cool shit that you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily hear about the BattleTech universe, you know, unless you were really 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 into it. And they'd kind of bring it to light. Like I still remember they had a big roundtable discussion on the Grand Turtle, which is a I think a one hundred ton quad mech. And I had never heard of it before, and it was really cool to listen to them talk about it. And then the NDA came down, and it just went downhill from there. Yeah. Okay, Thatchery? Uh, just a question. Um, has there ever been a free-to-play game that's gotten anything other than mediocre reviews? The uh, League of Legends? Team I guess Fortress, Team Fortress. Dota League of Legends. Legends. Maybe Dota. Dota. Well, Team Fortress, has Team Fortress doesn't count, because Team Fortress used to be a paid game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one Good. comment I wanted to make is that the NGNG guys, they, they know their Battletech stuff, and they do love Battletech, but I think the problem they have is that they fell into the access trap, which is they had access to the people, and there's pretty much a silent game going on that if they, they want to keep access, they have to play nice. So I feel Precisely. bad for them in that way, because they are Battletech fans at heart. Ah, uh, they can't burn any bridges. Not at all. Yeah, to what degree they're Battletech fans or not can be Fast. debated. Yes. You've got a word? I have many words. Namely, NGNG and their... their <laughs> Put it this way, someone over there must have signed a contract, right? Contract that... with me, become a magical podcast. Yeah, but, no, but I mean, they must have signed a contract that says they must continue to report on this game and on this game and share their voices in new 
Yeah. I don't know how long, but maybe maybe for uh, more months, a year longer, you know. You know, and I I wish them I wish them a lot of fortune in that. I I really do. I hope they enjoy the time working with PDI and IGP. And okay. the slowly dying player. Hey, Atlas. Vass, are you implying that they're going to be trapped in the Dark Age to come? Yes. Yes, Kalos, I am. NGNG dies for our sins. <laughs> Iggy? Yeah, I remember when NGNG would uh, basically just show up over on the old uh, the Battletech forums and whatnot, and, you know, they had actually, it's like you guys have said, they actually were Battletech fans, and they got into it, and they did good stuff, and they were actually trying to bring the community together, and it, I hate to phrase it like this, but it's almost like MWO killed that part of their souls, or something, you know? Alright, moving on here. Let's move on to Operation Exodus. (laughs) Bass? Operation Exodus is something that I did not start, but... More something that the player base as a whole started. If you've been to the RSI boards, and most have, there is this gigantic thread over there for Mecha Warriors in general. Where we just sit about, and we talk about old games, and... Yeah, Mech Warrior Online, so on and so forth. And basically, we're waiting on... Waiting on the dogfighting. It's coming up. Yeah. A lot of the goals are there. Like One of the, so the weirdest things <laughs> over there is the PTSD that most sufferers of this, this long and bloody beta period seem to have incurred. It's, it's kind of kinda sad, actually. Post-traumatic piggy disorder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> post-traumatic piggy disorder. But, but yeah, was- basically, everybody is paranoid. They're afraid that Chris Roberts is going to betray them. They're afraid. Mm, uh, They're worried. Know. They're so skittish. I don't know if I that's going to happen. Tune in. I mean, it's a, it's a realistic fear. Yeah, yeah it's a realistic it is. Fear. I mean, well, even like, almost, our like, own... How many- uh, I mean, even our own Alex Wolf here, he was uh, showing symptoms of this not too many weeks ago. So. Well, oh, man, they're going to betray how me. Many, uh, how many Kickstarters recently have been like, you know, old old developers of like, you know, pretty good games that have kind of come back from the dead and been like, hey, I'm going to make this new game, kickstart it. How many of those games have been utter shit or haven't even come out yet? And then Chris Roberts, uh, who kind of the same position. Nobody really talks about Wing Commander anymore. They're pretty old ass series. Well, he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna make my space game." And everybody's like, "Okay." That's not true. We've had at the two. same time. We got Mega Man and the Neverhood guys. They've been successful. Yeah. Have they yet? Are those games? Yes. Out? No, yeah, no, they're being made they're now. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, see, see. Uh, not Mega Man. Oh, really? not my Mega number Man. nine man. Oh yeah, number nine. Mega, Old Mega man. Old okay, boy. Nine. Alex. Uh, I see. I got called out as the infidel here. Yes, the infidel. No, it's just. What I'm us. trying to say is. What do you feel it's a, when you it hits? You have to challenge authorities. You have to look at what, what they're doing. You have to ask questions. You have to ask questions and have them answered because, well, the what Chris Abbott is doing only he knows. It may not be the game for you after all. You have to you have to make sure that the money you're spending are spent well. That you I'm not saying he's going to take you for a ride. All I'm saying is make sure you grab deal responsibly. Okay, Kalis. Um speaking of PTPD, uh I mean it's just like any other relationship. When when you get out of a bad one you you always have a rebound. You always have a bad relationship that's always rocky afterward. Or and you don't trust them and you bring all your baggage with you. It's just human nature. Alright, no bleas. Uh you can see it with so many people, even on the Star Citizen board right now. Uh I myself and a couple of others here are going to stop playing video games if Star Citizen doesn't do well. That's yeah, because I mean, we'll be we have, well, they say that, but... Well, we say no, that, yeah. we mean it. Because 
a lot of us grew up on Mech Warrior. I grew up on Mech Warrior. It was the only thing that I was looking forward to, and the reason why I built a gaming PC in the first place. And for it to turn out so bad, to be ignored constantly in favor of a hug box. And for it to end up like this, it's so off-putting that I didn't even want to try to do anything for Star Citizen. I don't want to play any more video games. Don't yeah. really want to do anything else. Now I'm just going to wait for Star Citizen. And if it turns out badly, then that's two in a row, and I'm not going for the third strike here. Well, I know this. From this, the goons have fallen. The low tax site is closed. Dead. And the Smurfy Romancer really? is dead. And the Smurfy competitor, Mech Romancer, is dead. dead I knew dead, it was going to happen. I told them. You know, we only needed Smurfy. Iggy. Yeah. I was just going to say, squawk in peace, boys. You yeah, will be missed. I, I've got something to say, too, about this. Uh, uh, oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> when the rats leave the sinking ship, well, you, you got to consider just what the fuck's going on, right? Right? Uh, well, I see we are experiencing pretty much lack, loss of care, loss of effort on the part of community. People just don't want to do stuff anymore, I suppose. If you look at the uh, the Wikipedia page, I mean the MacWire Wiki, there are those new Macs added, but people don't even write about them, anything about them. They don't have their models posted. People just stop caring. We are experiencing a heat death of MWO, I suppose. Which would explain why... If we're experiencing entropy in MWO, that would explain why NGNG contracted to become a magical podcast. All right, Thatchery? Um, I guess it's kind of like... With the, with the goons leaving, like, every... I guess every game, they have, like, that, that core audience of people that'll make fan sites and stuff. They'll, like, organize things. And you kind of have that outer fan base of people who are just, like... They're just playing the game and they're not really doing anything special. And I think any like developers really need to pay attention to when that core fan base that does stuff, like they, they make websites and stuff and they organize things. When they start like stop playing your game, that's like the death nail. That's it. Yeah. They're... Not yeah, the nothing's more, impre- no, no, nothing more depressing than seeing a ship. dead wiki for a game. Okay. Rats have left the ship. One comment I wanted to make is that there was a presentation going around the forums called Free to Play the Wrong Way in Age of Empires Online, talking about how Microsoft, uh, someone from Microsoft, oh, yeah. talked about how they totally screwed the dog. Oh, did you? Okay, so this yeah. is old territory. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say that the parallels are pretty shocking there. It's like, I can put it back into the notes. I'm not sure if we talked about it last time or not at this point. Well... Put it up. It's it's an interesting read. All you need to do is replace every mention of Age of Empires Online with MechWar. Yeah, I'll go. put that in the notes. The Good. worst part about it, too, is the fact that you hear Microsoft Game Studios talking about, oh, yeah, we did this to fix it, and we did this, and we did this, and it worked. And then you realize that PGI has no intention of doing any of those things ever. All right, Nicky. I was going to say, the most telling part of the entire presentation is what he says at the very end. Annoy your fans and your base at your own risk. Yeah. And yeah, that really, that PGI just, that sums up very MWO, good about that. that right there. Yeah, it does. So I've got a message for the last few remaining golds who are making their way. All There's right. been too much violence, too much pain. <laughs> but I have an honorable compromise. Just walk away. Give me your game. Your mech, your MC, get on the dropship, and we'll spare your lives. Just walk away, and we'll give you a safe haven from this wasteland. Just walk away, and there will be an end to the horror. Just walk away. Selah. Kalis, you want to say something? Yes, I just That's wanted Kalis. to point out some things. Uh, I've been with MechWarrior for many, many years. Uh, I started with MechWarrior, the game. <laughs> way back, way back in the day. I've uh, played through pretty much 
iteration of it up until this point. I got in early beta and I played them till probably just a few months ago. That's when I stopped. Is November 23rd of 2013, and this game still has no DX11. It yeah. has no UI 2.0. It has no lobbies, and that's what's oh, going to kill them. Oh, community warfare. It doesn't even have the beginnings of community warfare. No phase one yet. There's That's not even in here. And this is what they've done. They've taken this surefire franchise. They've made so much money in so little time. 5.7 million off of founders. I mean, that just guarantees people want to play. And they completely wrecked it by just doing the poor, the poorest form of, you know, just work you could possibly do. They didn't put any effort into it. Or maybe they did, and maybe their uh, bosses sucked. But all that remains is they don't have a game. Nobody really wants to play it anymore. Even the hardcores in my other unit I was with that do play it every day are, st- are tired of it. They're just sick of it. And, and at this point, I think it's time to wait another decade. Just walk away. That's my two cents, at least. Just walk away. Yeah, with those remaining stragglers, all, like now all it takes is for something that fills that niche to come in, and they will lose everything that they have left. Mm-hmm. Alex? Out. At the end of the day, I think what EJ managed to do is not build a game. This is a sandbox. And I don't mean a sandbox game. This is literally a sandbox, which is like, a, it's a box with a little bit of sand inside, but people come together to play in it anyway. They enjoy their company. They have their imagination to boost the fun factor. But at the end of the day, well, people grow up, they look around, they notice, well, it's a box with sand, and I'm kind of sick of it, and they just leave because there's nothing here. Laser. It's, it's really sad. I just wanted to remark that Bill mentioned a long time ago that MechWare Online's trending, MechWare Online's trends on Google Search are starting <laughs> to go lower than they were before open beta launch. Like the peak yeah. of MechWare Online's trends in, uh, on Google was open beta. The, the opening of open beta itself. Launch was lower than open beta, and it's been downhill since then. And Star Citizen is just, you know, you, I, I, the favorite thing we like to do is compare it against Star Citizen, and Star Citizen, you see a little bump in October 2012, sort of lulls in June, and that another bump when they launched a new website, and then there's another big trend of a, uh, there's another big increase in interest lately. But MechWare Online is just Slowly I tanking said. since open beta. L- launched didn't even perk it up. Right down. No police. At this point, I don't even think we can trust that we'll see another Mech Warrior game in a decade. I mean, we would like maybe to say that you could see that in a decade. It's and yes, maybe, maybe it the is best. for the best. It is but as far as I can tell, you know, they've it, ruined it so much. It's time to take the dog and bring it behind the shed. Yeah. We said this back in August, Connor. I know. You and it's, I. It's gone so far that I highly doubt that any actual studio, because if we call PGI an actual studio, then we're just letting them win. I highly doubt that any actual studio is going to look at the profits and look at the people that have actually played and said, yeah, sure, that's a risk we can take. Because nobody would have taken a risk before PGI anyway, and PGI has done so badly and has gotten such bad press that people will look at Mech Warrior and say, that's the problem. It wasn't PGI, it was the Mech Warrior franchise. And it's happened countless times, and it could happen again. Well, that's so why there was so much fighting. All we have. The Golds were, know it. They know this is the last yeah, stretch. Yeah, they know it. Now, this is nuts. Yeah, I'm a confirmed gold, and uh, while I am only in my 30s, I wouldn't like to wait another decade, but maybe I'll have to. <laughs> and not only am I a gold, but I'm also, I have the, the mark of the beast, the mark of the chosen people, the overlord red star. But just to tell <laughs> he you... He is uh, over gold. Yeah, I'm over gold. gold. <laughs> but I, I am going to keep playing 12 mans, but here's something I posted at the end of August. We're now at the end of November. This is the end of August, but I'm not sure if you're trolling, but I'll take the bait. 
Community Warfare was supposed to be in 90 days after they rushed to open beta. 270 days plus later, still nothing. Clans were supposed to invade when the one-to-one real-time calendar hit summer. They were supposed to be here months ago, and Rachelhag should have fallen. Calendar now frozen? Nothing. Still no such thing as a lobby, so you can't scrimmage against your friends or run events. 4. Still no in-game voice chat, so pugs still get erased by four mans. Still no DirectX 11 for Crossfire, etc. Still no UI 2.0. Still no Roll Warfare skill trees, and some skills like Pinpoint don't actually do anything. Information Warfare, still no function for the command console, despite being in-game for 18 months. NARC, still unusable. ECM, still top dog, but BAP at least now counters ECM. Still no dropship <laughs> mode. Capture points, day, still not bases with turrets, but they at least have a glowing fence. New mechs, couple new maps, hit detection still bugged but somewhat working, collision and knockdown still not back in, devs utterly screwing founders who paid for a first-person view game by forcing everyone to play against third-person view. So yeah, pretty stunning progress, but stunning by omission, not by completion. Iggy? Yeah, you know, I'm one of those people who put money into the game. Not a lot, but you know, I feel like for whatever it's worth, I've got my cash worth out of the game. I, at this point, can say I don't expect it to ever go beyond what it is. And in some way, I'm content with saying, you know, I can get on. If I want to get on and kill something in a battle mech, I can do that. You know, they've broken me. They've broken me as a fan. I cannot honestly say that they could surprise me. They could could put in Community Warfare tomorrow... And it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything for me. Mech Warrior Online is just what it is for me at this point, and I'm content to ride this down until it's a ball of flames, and then just gracefully bow out. Lug. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that this game was actually my first foray into the BattleTech franchise. I never played any of the other Mech Warrior games growing up. I never played BattleTech or anything. And this game honestly almost ruined the entire franchise for me. If not for a few people telling me that, you know, the good old games were better and it wasn't always like this, I probably would have said fuck this whole thing and just walked away months ago. Alex? I like well what I <laughs> they're gonna People say that it may there may never be a novel MechWarrior game. Well, I'd like to believe that MechWarrior Online came at an unfortunate time because uh, it barely missed the Kickstarter boom. So uh, we will we'll probably never know how much of what the game has become is because of the publisher and publishing deals and what what not. But what if people who are responsible for the previous good games, people who made Mac Commander, Mac Warrior 3, Mac Warrior 4, whatever, what if they banded together, they came to Kickstarter in like three to five years and say, hey, we have obtained the, the loss. We are those guys. We're going to make a good Mac Warrior game. I think it may yet rise from the grave. I won't be looking out for it, but it may happen. Okay, Tolkien? Just a a point, I looked into the background of the person who founded Infinite Game Studios, and as far as I can tell, he's a fellow by the name of Kelly Zednak. So to Alex's point about the people who were the bat, the you know, behind the successful MechWarrior games, like MechWarrior 2, from what I can tell, Kelly's Mac was. So the people pulling the strings are actually some of those people, which is a scary thought. Um, I guess the thing that depressed me most about this is, uh, like, um, like a wounded. I did not grow up with Mech Warrior. I did not know it well. Um, so this was kind of my first kind of introduction to that. I had seen it like on Xbox, but I never played it. And it just depresses me to think that this is people's like first. Intro- this is gonna be a lot of people's first introduction to Mech Warrior. All right, Vass. Yeah, for those who remain curious, and there's a fucking lot of you actually. <laughs> Believe it or not, this isn't the end of the Comcast. No, no, no. We plan on making many more episodes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move Mech Warrior into us into the special games. You now, how we'd used to have specials for Star Citizen or specials for Heavy Gear. 
That's that's what Neck War Online is gonna be from now on. I'm not, I'm pretty sure our main will be Star Citizen since that's the game most people seem focused on. But we'll see. Maybe we'll do bi-weekly Mech War Online or just <laughs> who knows. I think quarterly. right now we're looking at every three weeks. Yeah, or quarterly, like once a month. Maybe once a month, once a month for entirely up quarterly because the game moves so slowly and so little changes that it's just not worth it. Just not worth it. And that's about all I have to say. Gamers like us are a dying breed. Uh, most of oh us God. have watched other IPs get run into the ground or vanish into obscurity, and that's where Mech Warrior Online is headed. That's where the Mech Warrior IP is headed. Uh, yeah. you know, Carmack finally left id, tech for re- or id for real. So we know that Quake and Doom are dead. Tribes is dead, ruined by the same bull. Uh, bullcrap hug box stuff that Mech Warrior has. And Mech Warrior's dying too. It's going to happen. So where do we go from there? What do we do? Are we really going to just stand by and watch these industries and IPs just fade away? Die? Hello, I'm Alex Wolf, and Mech Warrior was my favorite gaming franchise. I think after all this experience, I'm pretty much cured now. I guess I'll ride this falling ship down to the bottom and document the disaster for at least one more month and then it will be time for me to move on. Even though it's my beloved childhood franchise, I guess there are many people like me around. It's pretty sad. I'll close out this uh, little round table of MechWarriors Anonymous. And it. I'll say that I'm in the same boat as Alex, MechWarrior Battletech has always been my franchise. You know, if there's one name that I think kind of stuck, that sticks out in you know, all the books that I read in middle school and high school, the name that stuck sticks out most to me to this day is still Victor Steiner Davian, because that was all I read in middle school and high school. And every, every, every week I would go and play whatever Battletech games I could on the internet or at the game store or whatever. It was everything that I cared about in middle school and high school. And now I'm watching this all sort of collapse in front of me, and it's kind of sad in, in a way. I think, in a way, I'm... I'm I don't, I'm not quite ready to move on, but at the same time, I listen to people like Shilogy over at the NGNG team speak and listen to his spectacular failure of logic, and I realize I don't necessarily want to be involved with this fan base anymore. I hide my association, my love of Battletech at this point because I feel embarrassed for it. But I will say this, and I'm going to quote a host that I left on the Gold Forums that I think summarizes everything very nicely. You create your own hell. Everything that's led up to this moment has been a direct result of PGI's actions and the actions of those who blindly supported them regardless of how spectacularly absurd their logic was or how maniacally stupid their design decisions were. PGI, this is what you get when you take a game that was good as its core and tack on unnecessary crap without documentation for the sake of getting new players. This is what you get for lying to your core user base who also, I might remind you, are your investors. This is what you get for telling said core base that they are no longer the target audience. This is what you get for smashing your original design pillars in the name of accessibility. This is what you get for dribbling out content and balancing it according to what you want to sell that month. This is what you get for hiding threads that you don't agree with on your own forums. This is what you get, what really gets me, this is what you get for banning players for criticizing your game, regardless of whether the criticism was constructive or valid or not, on the, print, on the pretense of this criticism being outdated, and then tell them that you did that so, quote, you can have a chance to play the game again. I could go on, but my point is made. To those golds, who, those of you who are out there who say, who, who tell me throughout closed beta and open beta that if you don't like this game, then don't complain. Just don't play. Well, congratulations. You finally got what you wanted. Now let me ask you this. Was it worth it? <laughs>